News Hub travelled by water, road and land to get into some of Hawke's Bay's most cut-off communities today. And what we found was a family lucky to be alive, but with their livelihood literally buried. Nick Truebridge reports from Dartmoor. We're heading deep into Dartmoor, across the Tutaikuri River. Yeah, I need to bring back some supplies. To an isolated Hawke's Bay community cut off for a week and counting. Well, this is what it's come to, to get access to Dartmoor. Last night we got to the other side of the river. Tonight we're getting to this side of the river. A pulley system in a raft, and we'll go up there and see what we can see. After making landfall... That sucks naming a bridge. <laughs> We drive as far as anyone's been able to get up Dartmoor Road in a week. Suddenly, a new lake engulfing the road and surrounding farmland. With crucial bridges out, it's the separation, the inability to reach and help others, the locals here battle with most. I, I want to go and help them. Um, I really do. And um, um, we can't. Uh, I just reach out for all those guys. Just a, a big from our heart, um, yeah. For now, the only way around is cross-country, switching car for quad bike. On the other side is Ali McDonald's decimated family farm, buried by a metre of silt. There's pissing rain and it, you're up to your chest in silt. These gullies, you get up close to them, it sounds like Hocker Falls, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was nuts. Not in a good way. No, no, no. The family somehow are all accounted for. I mean, in Bowler it got to the gates at the lowest point. Dad said he rode a dinghy over that. We're talking two metres higher than that. So now this is, this is unseen. This family operation facing a rebuild from scratch. Once eventually I get my tractor out of the, the water, which has been sitting in water for a week, we'll try and get it going and get to work. The land they've lived on for generations is now buried beyond recognition. The only way through these waters is by excavator. Off the country roads and State Highway 5 to the west and State Highway 2 north remain impassable. This section of Marshall's Bridge has been completely washed out and what I'm actually standing on here is all the silt and slash that has been washed down the river. This is as far as we can get on State Highway 5 out of Napier and it's one of 30 washouts that Waka Kotahi is dealing with here on State Highway 5 and up the road on State Highway 2. A clean-up so massive, authorities simply can't give timelines for public access. This is phenomenal. It's, I've never seen anything like this before in my short lifetime. As those most isolated, most desperate, start the long road to recovery. Kia ora, Nick. There has been some development with access to the Tutaikuri River. Yeah, that's right, Laura. As we drove back down from the McDonald farm this afternoon, we got back to the river and were met by Fen staff who effectively said that they were suspending those boat crossings along the river. Why? Well, because there are fears that a dammed amount of water up the uh, further up the river is about to come down the river and obviously wash back through the banks. But not to fear because we understand this afternoon they have uh, allowed that boat to continue to make those crossings only during the day, not at night, but I've just spoken to a local farmer and he he says he was able to get through. But these are the sorts of challenges that locals here now face, measuring, uh, balancing, I should say, safety with the vital supplies they need. Uh, and just before I leave you, Laura, we're standing here in Pukitapu. Uh, if Dan just scrolls across a little bit, this used to be a vineyard. You've got uh, the farmstead behind us as well. It is deserted. It's like another planet here and just on that one of the locals we were speaking to today made a comment that really stuck with us. He said we want to remain on the public psyche. We do not want to be abandoned. Laura. Absolutely. Nick Truebridge, thank you for the update.